Hi, and welcome back to Acorn Knits. My name's Natalia, I'm a knitter based in Sydney, Australia, and this is my little nook on the internet where I talk about all things knitting. Now I am terrible at intros, maybe I'll never get better at them, they always feel really contrived and sort of stifled, so I'm just going to get into the meat of the episode, and I think I'm pretty much going to do that all the time until I find an intro that I actually feel comfortable saying that doesn't feel like someone has a gun to my head. So first things first, I'll start with the Moody Fairy Shawl. I've made a bit of progress. There's I think six sections and I've just hit the third section. So I started with the navy at the top. Let's see if I can get closer. With a sort of slip stitched kind of, um, actually that's not true, it wasn't slip stitched pattern. It was a interchangeable rib and pearl row. Anyway, it's sort of hard to see in the dark navy. And then that went down into the slip, slip stitch pattern which is the white and the light blue. And now I've just started the beige and the white. The only thing I would say is I really regret my color choice and where I placed it because I just thought, oh, I want to start with the navy and then the next one I'll do, I want to be white and blue. And then I didn't think that those colors have to be designated. So you have, for instance, color A, color B, color C, color D. So I just jumped right into it, not actually looking ahead in the pattern to think, oh, wait a minute, if navy is going to be color A, what is that going to be paired with later on? So as a result, it meant that there was going to be some color combinations that I really wasn't interested in. Um, I really wanted to avoid pairing the light blue with the beige, just because I think from a distance, they're going to kind of get muddled out. They're a very similar color. I think in regards to color, they're obviously very different, blue and beige are very different, but the tone is quite similar. Uh, if I put a black and white filter on, perhaps that will show the difference better. But I just didn't think they'd be a great combination. So when I read the pattern more, what I'd chosen as color B, which was, I believe, no, color C was the blue, was going to be paired with D, which was the beige. So I really thought about it and I wondered, I don't know, maybe it's not going to be a big deal. Maybe I'm just making a huge fuss out of it. But then a part of me thought, oh, I think I'm really going to hate it. But, so I have a lot of thoughts going in my head about this. Let me start from the start. So this shawl pattern uses four fingering weight skeins in equal amounts, pretty much. So what I'm con concerned about is that if I start changing where I want to place the colors, am I going to alter the amount of yardage needed for it, but I'm willing to risk it because I want something that I'm going to love. And if I'm ending up pairing colors together that I don't like, it's just going to decrease the chances that I'm actually going to wear it. So I think I've had a look and I've seen what colors are being paired with what, and I've sort of chopped and changed. So we'll see when we get there. At the moment, actually I've already made a change. Right now, this section that I've put the beige and white here should actually be I believe it should be the navy and white, which I also didn't love. I mean, I think navy and white's really elegant. It's not that. It's that I didn't want the beige to be introduced until much further down. I didn't want that. I wanted it to be introduced earlier on. So that's why I started with this. So it's it's really fun to knit. I think this is a fantastic project for a, um, a beginner color workist because so far, I'm just thinking as I say that, I think there's a two color brioche section, but at least the section here that's got the slip stitch, it's so cute and it's so easy. You only have to change it in two stripes. So you're never having to hold two colors at once. I feel like nothing I'm saying is making sense at the moment. We'll see how much I can edit this to actually make it cohesive. I think it's gonna be difficult anyway. But yeah, so far really enjoying it. I think the yarn is beautiful and I'm really liking um, how it's knitting up so far. And I like that there is these different changes every few, you know, every few sections that are quite different stitch patterns, so it really does keep you interested. The only thing I would say, and this is just for me, is that the delineation between them is quite harsh. And it has that in the picture, I should have realized that, but I was very inspired by Stephen West's shawlography that he did for last year, and I really liked how the colors kind of play with each other and there's not strong lines of delineation. Obviously, aside from that bottom border, that's quite bold. So I don't love this, but at the same time, I'm not finished and it can also look quite different when it's worn, when you've draped it everywhere and you know the fabric's kind of folding, it's not gonna be such a harsh line. So anyway, that is my moody fairy. 
but this is my first shawl and man they grow quickly you know you start off knitting four stitches and all of a sudden I'm at like 300 and something so I think it was flying by and I imagine I'm gonna start getting to a stage where it's not gonna fly by quite as quickly when you're doing rows that have 300 stitches but anyway really enjoying that so far and I think the colors play really well with each other I think they're very beautiful just like the ragdolls. That's really the main project I've been working on this week, in addition to always just chipping away at uh, the set of style sweater that I'm making for my father. So there's really nothing much to show with this one. It's just, get that all out of the way, just the same old tube, just growing more and more. So and for anyone who wants to see the floats, not that they've done anything different apart from grown, there's all my floats. So I still think that's such a cool pattern. If you had these sort of like pearl stripes with little pearl polka dots, I think that's really cool. It's just going away, chipping away. Um, I usually tend to do it in the mornings when I'm, you know, eating breakfast and generally watching like a knitting podcast or something like that. I'll just sort of tick away at it um, when I haven't properly woken up and my brain hasn't properly kicked in. Um, if I'm just doing stock in it, that's really simple. Whereas I don't want to be looking at, you know, a shawl pattern that has a different instruction each row and knowing where I'm at. And I think it's just more likely to make mistakes. Whereas with this, it's so simple. I've memorized it. Um, it's pretty much autopilot. My concern with it, however, and we'll see if it even becomes a concern. It may not be an issue at all. So what I'm worried about is so far, this is how much I've knit. And I need to get it to, I think, just around the chest sort of area before I start um, the, I was about to say color work. I mean, the whole thing's color work, but the sort of, um, the more intricate pattern that goes across it. I'll put the picture in to show you. So there's still quite a bit to knit and obviously the arms and everything, but I'm worried that I might run out of yarn. And I ordered yarn based off the pattern. Um, I didn't deviate. I used the exact same wool that they suggested, which is the Ramagan. And for the size that I was knitting, which is the medium large, for the main color, you needed 400 grams. And then for the contrast color, you needed 150 grams. And I ran that up to 200 just because I was worried in case I didn't want to run out, especially because I couldn't get this yarn locally. I had to order it from Canada, from Wall, wall of, I am mixing all my letters up today, from Wall of Yarn, um, which were amazing if anyone, wants to order from them I would absolutely recommend they were great however they're based in Canada and it's not the easiest thing to order from um, especially if you're ordering one skein it's maybe like $40 shipping which is fine when you're ordering 12 balls but when it's just one little one it feels a little wasteful but I'm getting ahead of myself so what I was saying is I needed 400 grams of the main color which is the navy and then 200 grams or 150 grams of the contrast color which is this white so I ordered that and with how far I've knit, which I haven't sh checked it on him obviously because it's a surprise, but I would say this would be around waist height or a bit more. As I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking that maybe it's actually not as big an issue as, it, as I'm making it out to be. However, the reason I'm a little nervous is for the amount that I've knit, I've already gone through two balls and this is the third one that I'm on. So almost finished and for 400 grams is eight balls. So I do have five more balls left, but this is the white that I'm using. I've only gone through one ball, it's almost nothing. And I still have three more balls of this. So my concern is that I'm gonna run out of the blue. I just worry if those calculations weren't correct, but then I feel really silly for thinking that because these are international designers. They've been doing this for years and years and years. I'm sure that they know what they're doing. But there's always that concern that, oh my God, what if I run out and it's just gonna be so difficult to get a hold of and blah, blah, blah. But I may just be getting ahead of myself. If that's already about three, maybe I should be fine with five. I think I'm just worrying, being a bit of a worry ward. But I'm sure it'll be fine. And I've got till early May. So time is ticking. Uh, I really should be paying a bit more attention to this than other things, but I just find stocking it in the round so boring, especially on such fine needles. I think these ones are, what am I looking at? These are three millimeters with fingering weight for a grown man's garment. It just feels like it's taking forever. But now I'm seeing it on camera, I do know it is more than, uh, than what I had the other week. 
a few weeks ago. So I just need to keep chipping away at it. And um, even though it's not the most exciting, it'll be really exciting when I get to do the um, the portion up here of the pattern as well as steaking because I've never done that before. So that'll be very exciting. But for now, it's just pretty mindless and I'm not really a fan of mindless knits. So that's everything for this week. It's really just those two items that I've been working on. And now that I've finished the Ranger and that's gonna be gifted to my boyfriend's father, I also wanna cast something on for myself. Now I know I just said that I should be dedicating more time to the set of style sweater and I will be, but I just wanna knit something for myself. It's almost mid year and I haven't really done anything aside from the moody fairy shawl. So I think I would like something practical that I can actually wear. So I'm gonna think some ideas about it as to what I'd like to do. Maybe something with a heavier weight yarn, just so I can feel like I'll get it finished and I'll feel productive for actually finishing something rather than, I don't know. I just don't think it would be a good idea to cast myself on a very fine fingering weight jumper and just torch myself for the next few months finishing it. So anyway, we'll see. But yeah, aside from that, I will see you next week. I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll speak to you next time. Bye.